What happened with me with this film? So I, I accepted the film and I was really excited to, to take this and I loved the idea and I was reading it. And I gotten probably two weeks into my uh, preparation for the film and uh, my father was diagnosed with cancer. And I was like, you, you know, first it, it, it stunned me and then it was the magical work of the universe. I could not believe that this was the film I was working on and I was, you know, forced to face, you know, my father's mortality. So it, it was, it, you know, it was rough for about a week and I got it together and I decided that we would use the process of the character who was suffering a loss and I would share my preparation with my father. And so we just started talking about love, time, and death. And we, we, it was some of the most open and powerful conversations that we, you know, we, we'd ever had. And um, they, they gave him six weeks. And uh, he actually, he lived for four months. So about three months into the six weeks, you know, I go to see him one day and he said, man, this shit is embarrassing. <laughs> And I said, what, Dad? He said, man, you tell everybody you're going to be dead in six weeks. <laughs> Three months later, you're still hanging around. <laughs> Miss that, Dad. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but it was so beautiful. And he got, we got to a place that we were talking open and, and comedically and, and really, um, I think I was able to embody the ideas of the loss and also the redemptive quality of the pain, you know, the the loss is bound to joy like pain and suffering are bound to joy the the being able to survive something is actually a big part of being able to find that next wave of joy you appreciate um smaller things mm -hmm. right like it was so magnificent for me um you know my, my father died on uh, on uh, November 7th um, but it was so powerful for me to be cleansed of box office mm -hmm. like I don't need the box office to be huge on this film I don't need to win any awards <laughs> you know I don't care it was the film that I worked on that I was actually able to comfortably and beautifully say goodbye to my father and I hope that this film embodies a bit of that so other people who are experiencing things like that will be able to use it in that in that way and it can potentially be helpful and help someone else so it was it was powerful to be cleansed of the foolishness of the game of numbers and awards and all of that type of stuff to actually be able, be able to create a piece of art that legitimately I just want people to see and hope it can be uh, helpful and transformative in their lives. You're talking about perspective. Perspective, absolutely, okay. yes, yes. Um, how much does fear play into preventing us from grasping perspective though? Oh no, fear is everything. Yeah, like if, if, there's, if there was one uh, concept that I would um, suggest to people to take a daily confrontation with is fear. Um, the, the, the problem with fear is that it lies, right? So fear tells you, hey, you know, if, if you say that to that girl, she's going to know she has you you know and she'll never really be attracted to you <laughs> if she knows how much you attracted to her yeah. don't say that no how we get her is when she walks by ignore her right. <laughs> right, so little, you know it's like pop it on your shoulder fear tells you dumb <laughs> shit like that right <laughs> you know so you know for for me the the daily confrontation um with, with fear has become a real practice for me since about three, three years ago, um, I, went, uh, I went skydiving in Dubai, right? And skydiving, skydiving is a really interesting confront with fear, right? So, so I, gotta, I gotta stand up, I'm sorry, I gotta stand up, I gotta stand up. All right, so, so 
All your well, friends, what happens? You well, go out, how you, oh, sorry, oh, I dropped my thing. Yeah. So what happens is you go out the night before and you, you know, you take a drink with your friends and somebody says, yeah, we should go skydiving tomorrow. <laughs> and you go, yeah, we'll go skydiving tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, and you go, yeah, and everybody goes, yeah, right? And you go home by, you by yourself, you're like, mm. <laughs> right, and you're like, well, yeah, I mean, they, they was drunk too. <laughs> Right. So so maybe maybe they not. Maybe maybe. I mean, we don't have to go. We don't have to do it. <laughs> so then that night you're laying in your bed and you just keep <laughs> and you're terrified. You keep imagining over and over again, jumping out of an airplane and you can't figure out why you would do that. Right. And you're laying there and you have the worst night's sleep of your life, but you still have the hope that your friends were drunk. Right. <laughs> So you wake up the next day and you go, you know, down and you say where you were going to meet and everybody's there. You're like, oh, shit. Um, <laughs> all right. All right. Cool, 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 cool. Right. So you get in the van and you don't know that your friends had the same night that you had because they're pretending like they didn't. They're like, yeah, man, my uncle's a Navy SEAL. And, you know, this is going to be great. I've been looking forward to this. And you're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> And your stomach is terrible. You can't eat and everything, but you don't want to be the only punk who doesn't jump out of this airplane. So you get there and then you have this safety brief and you're standing there and the guys will tell you, well, if the chute doesn't open, what's going to happen is you're doing you. Well, well why the hell would, why, what could happen <laughs> that the chute, the chute wouldn't open. Right. So you do a thing. And what you do is your first jump, you're attached to a guy who is going, you know, he's going to walk you out. So you go and you get there and there's an airplane and nobody's stopping. Everybody's still going. So you get onto the airplane and you're sitting there and, and you know, it's extra because you're sitting on some dude's lap, some stranger. <laughs> you're sitting on his lap and it's like, you know, you're trying to make small talk. Yeah, man. You... <laughs> so you do, you'd be, you be jumping with people all the time, huh? Be... <laughs> right, you know. So, and then you just want to make sure, you, know, you, got, you got kids, right? You got people you need to see, right? <laughs> You just want to make sure he's serious, right? So you get in there, so everything's normal. So you fly and you go up, you go up, you go up, you go up to 14,000 feet and you notice there's a, a, a light. It's red and it's yellow and green, right? So right now the light's red. So then you start thinking at some point the light's going to go green because you don't know what's going to happen, right? And you wait and it goes yellow and the light goes green and somebody opens the door and in that moment you realize you've never been in a freaking airplane with the door open. <laughs> right? Terror. Oh, sorry, I'm spitting. I'm spitting. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, terror, 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 terror. Right? So you go and then, you know, if, you're, if you were smart, you sat in the back so you don't go first. Right? And then people start going out of the airplane. And you go and the guy walks you up to the end of the thing and you're standing and your toes are on the edge and you're looking out down to death. <laughs> and they say on three and they say one, two, and he pushes you on two because people grab on three, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? And you go, and you fall out of the airplane and in one second you realize that it's the most blissful experience of your life. You're flying, right? It doesn't feel like falling, right? It's like the, you actually are kind of held a little bit by the wind and then you start and you, you start falling, you fall and you, there's zero fear. You realize that the point of maximum danger is the point of minimum fear. It's bliss. It's bliss. And you're flying. <laughs> right? And you're doing that. And then 20 seconds, 25 seconds, 40 seconds. And you have enough time to just kind of be like, oh, shit, that's that building. I saw like that one. <laughs> oh, you can see the ocean. <laughs> right? You start doing all of that. And the, the lesson for me was, why were you scared in your bed the night before? Why did you, what do you need that fear for? Just don't go. Why are you scared in your bed 16 hours before you jump? Why are you scared in the car? Why could you not enjoy breakfast? What, 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 what did you need that? The fear is, fear of what? 
You're nowhere even near the airplane. Everything up to the stepping out, there's actually no reason to be scared. It only just ruins your day. You're, you don't have to jump. And then in that moment, all of a sudden where you should be terrified is the most blissful experience of your life. And God placed the best things in life on the other side of terror. On the other side of your maximum fear are all of the best things in life. You know? Mm -hmm. So that was, that was, sorry, so that was, oh, was good. That was, yeah, that was, that was my right. experience with, uh, with skydiving and fear. All right. All right. So, so pract practically speaking. But I didn't like that take. I'm going to do it again. Back to the top. <laughs> I can sell that better. I can sell it better. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but when you decide to do something like that, like how does it work practically? Do you call your wife and be like, I might be dead tomorrow. Right. No, but that's but I you made know, a drunk that's, promise. Yeah, yeah, I made a drunk promise. Yeah. Here, how about this? So I jumped. I had such a mystical, powerful, spiritual experience. I flew home and got my sons, and I went back. And ten days later, my sons jumped. Right. Yeah. Now that was a little different. Oh, let's say that makes me stand out, right? Because <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared. Right. So. It was one, so Jaden went first, right? Jaden wants to do everything first. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, yeah, my sons are going to have this crazy experience. And then Jaden went out of the airplane. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> then my oldest son, Trey, goes up and he goes out of the airplane. And I was like, this could potentially be the worst display of African-American parenting in history. <laughs> Right. I was like, both my sons just <laughs> fell out of an airplane. Jump. Right? Jump. Jump. Right. Because I told them to. And the, but again, the fear again. I was like, oh, my God. So I told the dude, I was like, listen, I want to see them go out, but I also want to see them land. And he's like, no, it's cool. So this time we went out and we did the straight bullet and I just went straight down past them. Right. I was like. <laughs> And he's like, good, good. <laughs> right, did the bullet straight past, pulled the chute late. I'm oh, sorry, this makes me spit. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Pulled the chute late, landed, and then videoed them coming down. But it was like, they had the same thing, the same experience with the fear. But that, that I'm telling you, the confrontation with fear is an absolute um, magical way of facing the things we have to do in this life, you know? Forget security, live for experience. All right, now you say you learned that three years ago. Yeah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. um, what about these small things that we get afraid about, right? Mm -hmm. So you are the funny guy mm -hmm. and you come along and everybody expects <laughs> to be entertained in summer, summer time, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just like, I right? <laughs> like, are you ever afraid that you're like, you know what, today I'm really not feeling Jazzy Jeff. Like, I'm just, yeah. I, I don't want to be that guy today. So this whole movie, yeah. you were not that not guy. Not that guy, right, yeah. Do you have fear of that, of like disappointing people? Because yeah. like, you're supposed to be funny and cool. Yeah, you know, the thing, that, that's that been um, one of the, the, the major confronts for me in my life over the past uh, three or four years. Like, um, there's a, there's a, there, w Will Smith is an idea, right? Right. So there's parts of that that's me, but that character from the Fresh Prince of Bel Air was who I was 26 years ago. Yeah, yeah. They love it. You see, they love it. You right? See, yeah. You, exactly. you, you people are this man's crack. Okay. He's talking about evolving, and like, moving on, and you're like Fresh Prince. That's all we want to hear about. You know. So, but that that's the thing to be able to. Um, to boldly be able to move and grow and create and hope that um, the things that I'm, you know, able to deliver at this point, you know, I was, I was you know, 20 doing the, the, the Fresh Prince, you know, so I'm, I'm uh, 48 now. So it's a, it's a, it's a really different a time in my life. Yeah, that got less of a cheer. Yeah, like, <laughs> like woo! <laughs> Like, tell us what that's like. Yeah, no, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah yes, Forget girls, please. yes, yeah. yeah. Um, yes. But yeah, you know. It's, so do you have a fear of being completely who you are? Because it may disappoint some people who just want to see that 28 yeah, year old. So. Yeah, no, I definitely, I, I definitely um, have difficulty with that. You know, there's a certain, 
you know, when you when you've created things that are so iconic, um, it becomes healing for people. Nostalgia is healing, you know, to the, the Fresh Prince theme is healing to hear that, you know, and it just harkens back to a time and a feeling and an energy, you know, that is um, a, a beautiful way to help relieve uh, some some little touch of suffering, you know, so uh, when people see me or the the Fresh Prince and even during that time I'm the movies that I made while I was making the Fresh Prince So it was the Fresh Prince during the the winter and then the the summers were bad boys Independence Day men in black, you know, so it was like it really captured a time um, So it, it, it's a uh, it's very difficult. I wouldn't have it any other way. I love uh, being able to make people smile and cheer, you know, over, over that. But uh, I also am going to boldly go to new creation. Um, you know, even something, something like the decision, um, you know, I had the two screenplays in front of me for the Independence Day 2 and for Suicide Squad. So I had to choose between the two of those and even the choice of going to Suicide Squad, not, nothing about the, the qualities of the movies, but the choice of trying to go forward versus clinging and clawing backwards, you know? So I'm, I, I do want to aggressively go forward and do new things and create and hopefully uh, be able to stumble upon a new heyday. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Now you have an incredible cast oh god yes in this yeah. movie. um how does that happen too like how do so many big stars yeah. decide yeah this and then how does that work between you all you know it's the it's the the ideas the screenplay alan loeb the screenwriter he just wrote a brilliant screenplay everyone related to the ideas of love time and death as uh powerful tools to try to put your life back on track so everyone related um to the journey, but it's, I mean, I mean, look at that group. That's like it's a, it's uh, like a superhero movie. Yeah. yeah. So so, did, your, just, did your father get to see any of it? Um, no, he, he came to set uh, once, but he didn't, he didn't get to see the film. And you all were close? Yeah, we were very close. Yeah. Yeah. My, fa my father, um, you know, when I, when I uh, put my life together and I look at my father, my mother and grandmother were the most influential people in my my life and in my mind when I draw it I always draw a, a triangle and my, my father was the base and my mother was the left side and my my grandmother was the right side and I always put discipline as the bottom my father hard work discipline endurance was really the foundation of creating my life and my mother was education and my grandmother was love so, you know, the combination of that discipline, education, yeah. and love was a... You know what, I'm, I'm really grateful for you sharing with us that part of you mm -hmm. and also the struggle with his death because the other thing is that we live in a time where people show these curated sides of them right, because right, I right, think right. of the same fear. Yeah. Right? You just Absolutely. want to be this piece. Absolutely. Not all the rest of it, but you like, struggle. Oh, nobody wants to hear all of that, yeah. you know? It's Facebook. Come on, let's oh. have fun. No. Yeah. So we... Tell them, Dude, it's a bummer your dad's gone. <laughs> hey. <Yeah>. Nobody here <laughs> speaks I'm not, no, I'm like sure. that. Right? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Like, oh, come on, brother. It's a bummer your father's gone. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but, you know, for me, it's... It, Laughing is the elixir, you know, and that was another thing that my father taught me. He was he was joking all the way up to the end, like laughing. You, it, you have to be able to laugh at everything. And for me, the beautiful part is uh, that that's my natural um, uh, color on the spectrum. I naturally go to comedy, you know, and when 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 I'm looking at something, I'm always trying to find why that's funny. And, you know, it's been really, really helpful in, in this experience and, and, you know, even just uh, this point in my life. Keep remember to laugh, remember to laugh and, and spend time with people that make you laugh. Like that is hugely important. Laugh and connect. Yes, absolutely. Those are good messages. Yeah. I love this, this idea, you know, it's, it, it's um, you know, a guy trying to put his, put his life back together and he just gets furious and rants and writes letters to love, time, and death. 
and then love, time, and death respond. You know, so it's, it's you know, a really, that, that beautiful Christmas flavor was, you know, just a little touch outside of reality, you know, so you get to, you get to uh, deal with real subjects and real topics and real loss, but because it touches just that New York Christmas, just a little bit outside of the, you know, how excruciating it would be if you dealt with it, you know, straight, hard, rated R, loss, you know. So I, I just love going into that realm of, uh, of um, uh, the, the mystical to be able to, to take a good look at, at, you know, real human issues. Mm -hmm. So you talk about real. Mm -hmm. I felt it was the most real I had seen you be. Really? Yeah, like I felt there was no filter there. Yeah. And um, I wondered, for somebody who could choose to do anything, yeah. was there something special that drove you to this? Part? Yeah, you know, when I, when I first I read it, you know, when I, when I first read it, every once in a while you, 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 know, you read a screenplay and the, the most important thing in a movie, well, I guess, the, you know, the, the, the two most important things that I look for is one is the universally relatable concept, right? So just at its core, when you first say it, when you say one line about it, can you connect to people? You know, and one, you know, one of the one of the best ones I've ever had, like something with like "I am Legend," the last man on earth. Yeah, yeah. Security, you keep an eye on this section right here. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, but it's like when you when you just have that one thing, you know. And with this, it was a it was a, a little bit heavier, but it was a guy trying to put his life back together after uh, an extreme loss, right? So people can relate to that. That's, a, that's a, an extremely relatable idea. And then I flip to the last 10 pages and the ending. It's like, the, you know, this is a movie that has a lots of twists and turns, but then even within the last 10 pages, there's still another surprise. When you can send people out of, the, out of a movie theater with another surprise, you know, and you know, so, I mean, in, historically, you know, I've, there's been times I've sent people out of the movie theater, and the surprise in the last ten minutes is that the movie wasn't good, right? <laughs> so you just you want to avoid that surprise. Yeah. You want to avoid that one. Uh, you know, but with this one, it's, it, it had such an interesting turn in in the end of it. It, it was it was um, you know one of the what? the most fun screenplays I've ever read. Why are you doing movies at all still? Like, you're rich. Yeah. You could, as we say, cock up your foot and rock back. <laughs> cock up my foot and, and rock, rock back. back. Yeah. I love that. Why, That's just like, fantastic. What is getting you out of bed to still go and do this thing? You know, I, I, um, I enjoy um, connecting with, with, with people and, and ideas. And, you know, it, it's... I have a mission statement. So every year for probably the past 10 years, I've worked out a mission statement for myself. And for the last few, few years, the mission statement has stayed the same. And it, you know, it's been improve lives, right? So when, when I go into something, I'm looking for how the quality of this piece could potentially improve lives, but it's all along the way. It's when you make the movie and how you're interacting with people in the process. And you know, the, the, the concept of improving lives runs through the center of everything I do. And then I realize that the, the, the way to improve lives is to continually improve yourself, right? So with that, every, every morning when I, when I get out of the bed, you know, I, the, I haven't, fixed everything in the world yet, so there's always something to do. And uh, in this film, I read a, an interesting quote um, from the uh, Siddhartha uh, Gautama, the, the Buddha. He said um, that um, good people have to get out of the bed every day and try to empty the ocean with a ladle, mm -hmm. right? And I thought that was, you know, I, I knew that was profound and I paused for a second and I said, all right, what the hell is a ladle, right? <laughs> right, so then, you know, I just, I touched it on my iPad, it's ladle. Oh, it's like a big spoon, a big spoon, okay. As we it's say, like Philly. a soup spoon, <laughs> yeah, it's like a soup spoon. I was like, why are you a soup spoon? So trying to empty the ocean with a soup spoon, you know, as the, the mentality of how you, you wake up every day to try to 
do good yeah. in, in the world. So for me, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really driven by continually trying to um, elevate my elevate my mind and elevate my spirit and care for my body and um, to be able to love as many people as effectively as as possible with this mystery of life that I've been given.